Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Shang. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and Happy New Year. On the New Year's Day of 2024, Xi Jinping adhered to the tradition of delivering his annual New Year's message. However, the first impression for many viewers was that he seemed to be wearing an excessive amount of lipstick, more than even Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen in her New Year's greeting. This appeared somewhat peculiar, perhaps due to unfavorable lighting conditions. In the past few days, Chinese social media has elevated Xi Jinping's New Year's message to the forefront of the news trending list. During his New Year's message, Xi Jinping acknowledged the swift pace of contemporary society where everyone is immersed in hectic schedules and grappling with considerable pressures in both work and personal life. He stressed the importance of cultivating a warm and harmonious social ambience, expanding inclusive and vibrant spaces for innovation, providing convenient and comfortable living conditions, and ultimately ensuring that people experience joyous moments, leading fulfilling lives and see their dreams come true. Xi Jinping also expressed, on the journey ahead, encountering wind and the rain is normal. Some business are under the operational stress, some individuals face difficulties in employment and daily life, and certain regions experience natural disasters like floods, typhoons, and earthquakes. I'm deeply concerned about these situations. The year 2024 marks the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Our commitment remains steadfast to advancing the unique modernization path of China. We will diligently implement a new development concept in its entirety, accelerate the establishment of a new development framework, promote high-quality development, and harmonize progress with security. Upholding the principles of stability, progress, and a timely problem resolution, we aim to consolidate and enhance the positive momentum of economic recovery, ensuring sustainable and enduring economic development. Regarding in the Taiwan matter, Xi Jinping emphasized. The reunification of the motherland is an inevitable historical trend. Compatriots from both sides of the Taiwan Strait should unite and collaborate, sharing in the grand honor of our nation's rejuvenation. During this year's New Year's message, Xi Jinping made some subtle changes, a customary practice he follows annually. Behind him stands an impeccably arranged bookshelf, more for aesthetic purpose than practical use. The subtle adjustment for this year involves a significant change in the pictures on the bookshelf. New additions include work-related photos, images from inspections conducted in various locations, and a few family photographs. Among these family pictures is a snapshot featuring the trio of Xi Jinping, Peng Liyuan, and their young daughter, an image likely captured in the early 1990s. Other family photos include group shots with Xi Jinping's father Xi Zhongxun and mother Qi Xing. Additionally, a photo from November 10, 2023 showcases Xi Jinping inspecting post-disaster recovery and the reconstruction efforts in Mentougou, Beijing, conveying the message that he has kept the people in the disaster-affected areas in his thoughts. It's worth noting that the Mentougou flood occurred in August, and Xi Jinping's visit to the area took place in early November three months later. Regarding this year's New Year's address, overseas media has also widely reported on it. The headline of the Wall Street Journal's commentary is, China's Xi Jinping warns of economic winds and rains as a recovery disappoints. Leaders' remarks came as data showed factory and service sectors continuing to contract to close out 2023. The article stated, Chinese leader Xi Jinping urged his countrymen to brace for more economic challenges in the year ahead. Sounding a cautious note as a string of weak readings highlights the many headwinds facing the world's second largest economy. Xi underscores the importance of the economy to the country's political priorities, noting that in 2024, which marks the 75th anniversary of the communist victory, China must further boost confidence in development and enhance economic vitality. 
Xi's remarks came hours after Beijing published the data that offered the fresh signs of weakness in the Chinese economy, piling pressures on the government to take bold new steps to fire up growth in the coming year. Official surveys released on Sunday suggest factory activity slid deeper into contraction in December, owing to thin order books at home and abroad, while the services sector struggled as consumers kept a tight leash on spending. Reuters also commented on Xi Jinping's speech, and the title of Reuters' commentary is Xi says China to consolidate and enhance economic recovery in 2024. In the Reuters report, it is stated that Xi voiced his concerns over difficulties facing some firms' operations and the hardship facing some people in employment and their daily lives, and the impact of natural disasters such as floods and earthquakes in some regions. China will promote high-quality development and balanced development and security in a well-coordinated way. She added, the government has in recent months announced a series of measures to shore up China's feeble post-pandemic and economic recovery, which is being held back by a property slump, local government debt risks, and a slow global growth. She said China will deepen reforms to shore up confidence in the economy. She said China will consolidate and enhance the positive trend of economic recovery and achieve stable and long-term economic development, she said. Here are my takeaways. To begin with, Xi Jinping broke from tradition in this year's New Year's address by employing a series of parallel sentences to depict the challenges facing China. This departure is notable. Given Xi's usual grand and affluent image, it's a marked change for him to use parallelism to describe the difficulties faced by the public in terms of employment, daily life, and even the impact of natural disasters like floods, typhoons, and earthquakes. Such difficulties were unheard of in previous years under Xi's leadership, where China seemed to be in a state of tranquility and prosperity. This sudden shift in narrative this year suggests a significant departure from the usual positive tone. Xi Jinping's unexpected shift to a more restrained tone acknowledging China's challenges might be a response to the growing visibility of these issues that can no longer be concealed or understated. The prevailing economic difficulties in China, if left unaddressed, could exacerbate social tensions. Consequently, Xi Jinping feels compelled to acknowledge these challenges. While he could opt to persist in denial, every action taken by an autocrat serves the overarching purpose of sustaining their authoritarian regime. Whether he speaks out or remains silent, it is all part of advancing his autocratic agenda. Take for example Kim Jong-un, shedding tears unexpectedly during last year's party congress in North Korea. It's surprising to witness his sudden display of sympathy as if he were an outsider, expressing concerns for the people facing issues like food shortages. This emotional act, accompanied by tears, managed to deeply move the North Korean population. In a similar vein, Xi Jinping has followed the suit. The difficulties faced by the Chinese people, such as employment challenges and the living hardships, which were even more pronounced in the past few years under stringent controls compared to this year, were entirely absent from Xi Jinping's New Year's address last year. It was solely focused on portraying an era of peace and prosperity, conveniently overlooking challenges, zero COVID measures or lockdowns. Hence, the timing and manner in which Xi Jinping chose to acknowledge China's difficulties could be seen as a crocodile's tear or characteristic of a dictator's hypocrisy. Xi Jinping's sudden portrayal this year, as if he has now recognized the hardships of the Chinese people, should not mislead anyone. As an autocrat, Xi Jinping is compelled to admit to China's challenges, indicating that the country is genuinely facing difficulties and the Chinese Communist Party can no longer conceal them. Furthermore, 
When Xi Jinping addressed China's challenges, particularly the difficulties faced by the populace in employment, daily life, and natural disasters, there is a noticeable shift in his narrative. He swiftly transitions to saying, I have always been concerned about these difficulties in my heart, leaving a sentence that the speechwriter's train of thought took an unexpected turn. Having touched upon the hardships experienced by the people, the logical progression should be to outline how the Chinese Communist Party and the governor plan to address these issues, showing empathy and a commitment to serving the people. However, Xi Jinping's speech takes an unusual route, expressing concerns without providing concrete solutions, resulting in a letdown. From another angle, this also reflects the mindset of an autocrat, emphasizing that his personal concerns surpasses the effort of the party and the government to tackle these difficulties or implement effective policies. The use of parallelism, concluding with I'm always concerned about these issues, creates a sense of starting strong but finishing weak. The question arises. What significance does his concerns hold when people are grappling with unemployment hardships, existential challenges? This underscores Xi Jinping's inflated sense of self-importance, implying that his personal concerns should be perceived as a source of great encouragement for the common people. This pattern also reveals Xi Jinping's consistent approach towards the populace. He refrains from visiting disaster-stricken areas, avoids witnessing the struggles of the underprivileged, and steers clear of challenging locations. Instead, he consistently adopts a distant, clouded concern, showing little inclination to visit disaster-stricken areas promptly. Despite advanced transportation options available, including private planes and high-speed trains. Xi Jinping appears content with expressing remote concerns, suggesting that simply caring in his heart should suffice, and the people should not expect too much from their leader. In theory, Xi Jinping holds the role of a high-ranking public servant employed by the people. Whether the people placed him in this position or he assumed it to govern the nation, there are specific duties he should actively fulfill. Rather than expressing personal concerns, the focus should be on concrete actions. The question arises, what meaningful purpose does expressing concerns serve? It's challenging to envision a scenario where US President Biden adopts a similar approach. If Biden refrained from local inspections and merely stated, I have you in my heart, I think about you, how would the people respond? Would they be moved, excited, or feel fortunate? The likelihood of such a reaction is low. However, Xi Jinping dares to adopt this approach and delivers it with unwavering seriousness, suggesting that his thoughts should be enough despite the significant challenges people face. Therefore, there exists a considerable distance between a dictator and the people, as they occupy distinct realms. Even when a dictator attempts to convey benevolence or goodwill, the words spoken often remain beyond the understanding of the populace. While there might be individuals in China who find the resonance in Xi Jinping's expressions like, I have you in my heart, or I am concerned about you, a broader perspective guided by open-mindedness and equal logic reveals the inherent gap between the leader and the people. The eighth direct presidential election in Taiwan are scheduled to be held on January 13, 2024 as part of the general election. Asked about Xi's speech at a New Year's press conference at the presidential office in Taipei, Tsai Ing-wen said the most important principle on what course to follow on relations with China was democracy. This is taken the joint will of Taiwan's people to make a decision. After all, we are a democratic country, she said. China should respect the outcome of Taiwan's election, and it is the responsibility of both sides to maintain peace and stability in the strait, Tsai added. China has cast the election as a choice between war and peace, and has refused multiple offers of talks by Tsai. 
but even she is a separatist. Tsai has made bolstering and modernizing Taiwan's defense as a priority, including pushing an indigenous submarine program. Everyone's home has a lock on them, which is not to provoke the neighbors next door, but to make yourself safer. This is the same for the doors to the country. Taiwan's people want peace, but we want peace with dignity, she said. Taiwan's government has repeatedly warned China is trying to interfere in the election, whether by using fake news or military or trade pressure. And Tsai said she hoped the people could be on alert for this. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.